vertical media, we've been known as that for the past couple of years. Um, and as, as of January, we changed to all trips. It sort of uh, encompasses the greater vision of what we do. Um, so, uh, a little bit about what we do. We build online travel planning guides for over 30 destinations across the U.S. Um, the majority of our um, sites are located in the Yellowstone region, but they're also any region that's a recreation destination, um, a national park area, Utah, Montana, Idaho, Wyoming, um, even Acadia National Park in Maine. Um, we work on area content, ad-driven sales, search engine rankings, and click data. Um, all of our websites bear the similar tagline, all, before their area name. AllYellowstonePark.com, AllJacksonHole.com, all AllBigSky.com. Um, here's a sample of what our All Jackson Hole site looks like. Um, we're a 12-person tight-knit company. Uh, we are primarily based in Jackson. We have employees in Bozeman, Victor, Star Valley, Portland, Maine, and um, working on the road. Uh, we began 15 years ago as a travel guide just for the Jackson, Grand Teton, and Yellowstone area. We've expanded since then. Um, we do have a central office in Jackson, but the majority of our employees work from home or when they're on the road, they work from mobile offices. Um, travel isn't just our business, it's what we do. This is some of our personality. We're a very loud organization. Uh, when we joined YDP, we wanted to learn from like-minded businesses. Um, we have the ability with our websites to reach over 6 million people traveling a year. But we didn't have the right message to reach them. So we thought that through the Uncommon Sense course, we could help direct our message towards these visitors. Um, we wanted to lead by example, to be inspired and educated and informed, but also be inspiring and be educating and be informative. Uh, in module one, um, when we set out our internal work group, I took on the responsibility of all the work initially. A uh, year into the project, I asked our president, Tim, to step in and help me. I didn't think I could do everything by myself. Um, then the two of us decided that if the changes that we were going to put in place throughout the company were going to affect everyone, we had to involve everyone. So we involved every employee that we had. Um, we also decided not just to analyze our Jackson office, but to analyze our home offices as well. Um, you'll see my name next to this module. Um, when we assigned modules to everyone, um, we asked what their interests were, where they lie. And um, I took on the responsibility of module one. I also was the project manager for most of the modules. Um, so throughout this presentation, you'll see who helped me in the company. Um, we surveyed all of our employees. Everyone was on board right away. Um, some had a few concerns. Uh, would the changes that we put in place affect just us? Would they affect our clients too? Would they affect our visitors? And what was the time commitment? How much would it take away from our everyday jobs? Uh, and we also knew that we needed everyone to commit to making the sustainable changes a priority. When we changed from vertical media to all trips, we knew that we needed a new mission statement, a new vision about us. Um, we threw out some core values um, in a brainstorm that really said who we are, what we work for. Dependable, valuable, human, informative, and resourceful came out. Sustainable came out over and over again. So we set out to define each of these values. Um, sustainable we defined as believing in healthy growth that protects and replenishes ourselves, our communities, and the planet. <coughs> and the uh, mission statement we came up with is we empower you to discover, enjoy, and protect the places you love. We're very passionate about travel. We're very passionate about protecting the places that we want to travel to and the places we want other people to travel to. Uh, in our internal communication strategy, we use a software program called Basecamp. It's a project management tool. Um, we manage our projects, daily tasks, um, due dates that are set to these tasks, and then any goals that we have for future projects um, or, or anything down the, down the road, resources that we have. Um, in this in our base camp program, we created a project called Greenify. Uh, we assigned one or two employees per module, um, and they set out tasks, 
due dates for each um, project that was due in the modules. And then we will go ahead and use this when we set future goals, when we reassess our policies um, and work towards things in the future. This is a look at how Basecamp is set up. Um, we set up the presentation separately and then each module with whoever was working on the module. Once you were done with the task, you could check it off and it would move below uh, your current tasks, your outstanding tasks. Um, we wanted to be a leader in sustainable business, not just in our field, but in sustainable business in general. And we wanted to lead by example. So we set goals of communication, communicating with our visitors and our clients with each other. And we also wanted to set out to offer help and resources to anyone who wanted them. Not just to other businesses, but resources to our visitors and to our clients. The quote, in future, if future, future generations are to remember us with gratitude rather than contempt, we must leave them more than the miracles of technology. We must leave them a glimpse of the world as it was in the beginning, not just after we got through with it. This really amplified what we wanted to do. Um, we are technology based, but we also care more about our environment and we wanted to and, um, convey that to our visitors and to our clients. Um, Bob helped me with the waste stream management. Uh, we knew going into this that e-waste and paper use were our biggest hurdles. As a technology-based company, paper use doesn't necessarily come up first, but it is when you have to deal with billing. Uh, our Jackson office is really easy to manage. It's a small space. There's only two employees in there, so it's easy to watch what comes in and what goes out. Um, but we decided that we needed to look beyond our homes in terms of resources. What was going to affect our site visitors? What was the impact our visitors would have on each area? So in our resources list, we looked at areas not just where we lived, not just Jackson and Bozeman and Star Valley, but Livingston and West Yellowstone, Cody, Big Sky, Gardner, and the Yellowstone area. Um, we came up with six pages of resources. Every possible resource that you could um, recycle anything in the area. We're going to post this to each of our Yellowstone Regional websites so that travelers can look at this while they're traveling or while they're planning their travels. They know where they can recycle. Um, in our waste audit, we found that we do have a significant amount of recycling in terms of paper, newspaper, glass and plastic bottles, magazines, and cardboard. We don't have a lot of this, um, but we noticed that we do need to reduce everything that we do consume, um, and then recycle, but reduce first. We found in 2010 that we had 50 pounds of e-waste that we'd been saving in our office because we didn't really know the best way to recycle it. Computers, printers, cables, everybody has it. Um, we spent a dollar a pound with the Jackson Community Recycling Center to send it to a facility in Colorado to recycle. Um, this was, was big for us because it also set precedent for when we do buy future machines, um, printers and computers, which we do often, that we <coughs> need to look at where it can be recycled. Um, we also looked directly at what went to the landfill. We purchased corn-based cutlery and water glasses. Um, in our Jackson office, we don't control our energy. Um, we also don't control water. We have a shared restroom and we um, bring in drinking water. So we cut out the cutlery altogether. If you wanted it, you had to bring it. Um, with everyone working from home, this wasn't a problem, but we do have two employees that took advantage of that, um, that it affected them. And then the water cups, if we have clients in, we have to offer them something, so we switch to reusable cups um, that we take home and wash ourselves. Um, we found that we divert about 85% of our waste from landfills by recycling alone. But in 2011, we want that to be up to 90% and eventually grow from there. We set out a man waste management policy. We completely cut out the, the things that went directly to a landfill, the cutlery, the water cups, the sticky notes, cut them out altogether and went to notepads and goose paper. Um, we set up goals for e-waste recycling, not only in our office, but our home offices as well. We set areas to reduce waste altogether. 
we did have a recycling program in place when we started the course and we posted our policy and just notes to each other, um, stop, think before you toss, next to our recycling bins. Um, we also set out boxes for newspaper and regular paper recycling to see which produced more. Uh, and we'll cut back on those altogether. Um, some of our um, things in our office are recycling bins, our print center with both the recycling and the newspaper um, eco-friendly cleaning products. Um, Allison helped with the purchasing um, module. We did a tracking matrix. I happen to be the office supplies purchaser, so I can monitor easily what comes in and what goes out uh, and what we can cut back on. We uh, set regulations for purchases if anyone had to purchase supplies in their home offices. Um, we set guidelines. Ask yourself, what's the quality of the item? What's the cost to you and the cost to the environment? What's the packaging impact um, and the carbon footprint on the item that you're purchasing? When we took purchasing a little further, we did the comparison of all the purchased products, but once something ran out, we continued to compare it. We add it to our list. Uh, we did contact four businesses that we use. An example of a large one was the Staples office in Jackson. Um, they don't carry a lot of the eco-friendly lines in their store, and so we've continued to pressure them to carry the cleaning products and the paper products that you can order online, but that's much easier to get in store. Um, we also asked our employees to sign a plastics pledge to cut back on single-use plastics in their home offices. Um, packaging, pens, anything that is going to be tossed out and cannot be reused. We cut back our office plastics um, in 2011 by 15%. Lauren and Chris helped me with the social community investments module. Um, communication is a really big part of what we do and who we are. So inside the organization, we wanted to strengthen, enrich, and enhance our relationships to encourage each other and be creative. And then outside the organization, we wanted to share our enthusiasm for traveling and exploring and educate and inform. So inside the walls, we set up a goal that we needed to interact with each other more. We needed to feed off of our team energy. You'll all come away from these module, from these workshops really excited and really energized but you don't know exactly what to do with it because nobody's as excited as you are. Um, I find that a lot. Uh, so we, uh, in 2011, um, and this has continued over the past few years as well, but we've spent a lot of quality time together camping. We have voice meetings weekly, monthly, quarterly. Um, we all went to Austin, Texas to a convention and spent 10 days together, uh, which we don't often do because we're all on the road or working from home. We also created an internal blog spot where we had uh, humors, jokes, our personality really comes through. We posted our sustainable resources and um, I really liked the idea of the Sustainopedia. I think that's something that we really need. You have your idea, someone else has their idea, and this is a place where you can go back and forth on it. Outside the walls, we really want to reach out to our visitors, <coughs> creating specific categories to post resources and eco-tips while they're traveling. Um, we are currently in a redesign of our website, so this will be a priority um, by the end of the summer. And also volunteering. We've consistently volunteered over the past four years but we've consistently volunteered for an organization that doesn't necessarily affect our visitors, more so it affects us. So we're looking at organizations in the area, not just in Jackson, but in the greater Yellowstone area that will affect the majority of our visitors. Um, just today I confirmed a Trails Volunteer Day with Friends of Pathways and Bridger Teton um, for us. So we are in the process of setting up one group volunteer day for all 12 of us. Um, to be together, and then also one personal day, a paid personal day for everyone to volunteer in their specific area. Some pictures of um, our efforts. We volunteer at the Western Center for Historic Preservation, both at the White Grass Ranch and the original Barbie C Ranch. Um, this is what we do when we step out from behind our computers. Um, a third project we took on in December 2011 when we joined Lynx. We decided that we could give money, we could join, but we want to give our resources and our site traffic to Lynx for free. 
Um, we, once their website is live, once it's user friendly, we uh, have an article in place for all of our visitors that will explain the purpose and the usefulness of the site um, and the program in general. We have a sample itinerary set up that we use links to navigate around both parks. We have an ad campaign that will link back um, from ads that we've set up directly to the Links website that will drive traffic um, and drive users to the site. This will not only appear on all Jack all Yellowstonepark.com, but in all of the regional uh, websites that we have. West Yellowstone, um, Red Lodge, Cody, Grand Teton, Jackson. Um, in terms of numbers in that advertising campaign, um, we get over 4 million visitors just in the Yellowstone region alone. Out of those 4 million visitors, we estimate about 5 to 10 are looking for transportation options that we want to send directly back to Links. Um, we want to show them what their options are while they're planning, before they arrive. And we conservatively estimate that could lead to 500 converted riders. <laughs> um, more, more on that later. Um, <laughs> modules 5 and 6, uh, water and energy efficiency, after using um, a survey for all of our home offices and our Jackson office, we found that our employees use an average of 30% less pounds of emissions a year than the average person. We use around 13,000 and they use 20. We audited all the home offices and mobile offices. We have a few people working from um, vans and campers. Um, so we monitored those as well. We did our Jackson office. Again, it's a little hard to do because we don't control our energy bills, but it's shared with another office. Um, you can find a really easy to use spreadsheet on the EPA website. I highly recommend it. Um, it's easy to adjust to you. Um, let's see. And then we also set individual and in-office goals once we got all of the results back from 2009 and 2010. So we will continue to review the goals that everyone set in July and January each year. They set a goal in Basecamp. Um, they can continue to add their information from their energy bills, from their personal consumption. And then I will set up a review date in each of these months. Some measurable goals that we set in our office, we want to reduce energy by 15% in 2011. Everyone was on board with cutting their entire home energy bill by 10% in 2011. Um, some set goals of you know, replacing doors and setting heat five degrees lower in winter months. We do have a downside of being web-based. We have a carbon footprint that includes servers. Um, the majority of our servers are shared servers, which takes advantage, it, it matches you up with a single company or a few companies that takes advantage of the energy use on a server. Um, it could be when their downtime is, it's your high time. Um, and it could be one company or it could be several of them. We really only use two dedicated servers now, where before we had several running full time that weren't, that were just lost energy really. Um, we've switched to programs that do take advantage of sharing servers. And we're trying to look into how we can offset our footprint with servers through energy credits. Um, it's kind of tough. We have to work with that company directly to see how much energy we use, um, and it's tough to sort of rate that. Um, in transportation, um, we don't encourage commuting daily. We want you to work at home or wherever you may be. Um, we only have two employees that commute daily to our office. We save over a thousand gallons of gas a year by not commuting. A round trip commute to our office daily, five days a week, from Alpine would save five gallons on one vehicle, three gallons on another vehicle from Victor. Um, so we cut that out entirely. We do monitor our sales team travel. We have a sales rep here in Bozeman. Um, we have a couple in Jackson, and they travel to Colorado to areas all over the place. One will go to Acadia, so we have to monitor that travel as well. We take advantage of go-to meeting, um, an online meeting that we have weekly so no one has to come and meet in an office. And um, we also schedule multiple meetings in a trip, in a regional sales trip, to save multiple trips to that area. We put in place some incentives, including a tracking system for the most alternative um, travel mileage. Someone will get a $25 gift certificate to a restaurant of their choice based on 
how much mileage they have on biking, walking, public transportation, and telecommuting. We also have cruiser bikes in our town office for town errands. Um, we wanted to make a change in how transportation was presented to our site visitors. So we added information on the public transportation systems. This is a picture of what it would look like for the Bozeman Streamline bus. We have biking maps, pathway maps, um, pedicab info in Jackson. This will be, it's, it's on the majority of our websites, but we are going to cross-check everything by the end of July 2011 to make sure that it's on there. Links will also be on there as well, all of their routes. Um, in our response to climate change, we set a goal for the entire company to reduce energy waste by 15%. And then in terms of department goals, we set three really large goals that we wanted to work together on. Um, we wanted to incentivize paperless billing. We would like to see, of our over 700 clients, we want to see 85% of them paperless. Um, we are working to donate to a fund if they convert to the paperless system. We're developing a green leaf program where we have a set of guidelines and requirements for our lodging clients and for our activity-based clients. If they meet a certain percentage of those, they will receive a free ad in our green vendor categories. Um, they'll also receive a green link next to their name throughout the website.